Hi everybody. Uh, we're back with some more scraping on this blue guitar plate. And um, while this uh, work holding arrangement has worked really well for planing and gouging across the grain, now that I'm developing the, the shape and got to get into the details and subtleties, I'm finding it awkward um, to use the scraper um, with this only being able to just swing around 180. And so I've decided to add a feature to this tool so that I can use it the way I usually do. And I'll show you how that's working out. So I have um, drilled and tapped a hole um, in the bottom of the tool. Probably bumped into the top a little bit. And I'm going to put in a piece of threaded rod. And oh, that's pretty good. And then we're going to, oh, probably one more thing here. Make sure it doesn't slip around too much. I'm going to take some of this double sided tape. This is about a millimeter or 40 thousandths thick. And um, we'll put three pieces of it on the tool. <clears throat> and then we'll uh, we'll see about. Well, it might work the way it is. I was thinking that maybe I'd take that liner off, but we'll see how it works. Oh, that's good. Okay, so that's working fine. And now, um, in order to do a good job with this, I'm going to need some single point light from a low angle. And so I'm going to turn off the overheads now. I'll be right back. So now we have this little gooseneck light here, LED light, and we, we're going to be able to see the shadows and shapes the bumps and hollows very nicely with this um, easy to use light and this is a little cheapy from Amazon or something like that. Uh, so I have sharpened up my some of my favorite scrapers and we're going to go after the shapes and, and I don't know it's really useful to show every motion here, but I'll give you a sense of how some of these scrapers work in uh, some of these specific areas. Now, exactly what kind of burr you make is super important to how the tool behaves. So you can see this, this one's making little curls but it's not taking a very big cut. And also when I'm using it, I'm deforming it a lot. Now this one is pretty thin. Um, it's uh, 0.24 millimeters or about 10 thousandths um, of an inch. And so you almost have to bend it to use it just to get a grip on it and use it. But you can see it's really nice. It just is a great job of uh, shaping. To some extent, it will bridge low spots. Um, or maybe I should say it the other way. It bridges high spots. Um, and... 
It really does. It is such a great tool. Kind of hard to imagine doing this any other way. You can see exactly what's happening. And when you want to stop. So, usually, well, with any woodworking, really, there's a, a series of stages that you go through any kind of complex shaping job like this, where at first you're taking off a ton of material with each stroke, and then it gets less and less as you approach the surface. I just think the scraper is great because it it lets you see what you're doing you know, without obfuscating it in a cloud of dust um, and uh, scratching the wood to smithereens. Now you can see this little scraper is basically just erasing the tool marks that I've had and leaving a lo lovely surface. And I'm not suggesting this is easy. <laughs> I've been at this a long time, but this is certainly something that um, someone could learn to do and again I just think it's so satisfying to learn to use a scraper which really is dependent on your sharpening chops without which you know, there isn't a scraper, really. Just a piece of metal. So between your fleshy fingers <laughs> and this uh, thin, flexible edge, you kind of Put those two things together in order to get this job done. Now, some of these scrapers are capable of taking a whole lot more off. So that's a thin scraper with a fairly small burr. And now we're going to look at what we can do with, uh, this is the one of the original scrapers that I sharpened in the last session. This is 0.8, I'm sorry, well, 0 0.7, 0 0.78 millimeters or um, 30 thousandths of an inch. And it's got a huge burr that I turned on it with multiple passes. And you can see that this tool takes off a lot of material, lovely uh, curls, um, everything you could hope for in terms of precise control over where the material is being removed and um, you know, reasonable cut, reasonable size cuts, so you're not there for the rest of your life trying to take off a little bit. And then also, um, it leaves a pretty great surface. Um, as you can see, I think we, we said before that in classical violin making, nobody had any sandpaper, so all the surfaces were, were left by the scraper. <coughs> now, I'm not trying to suggest that scraping spruce is something that's easy to do. Um, furniture makers have it a lot simpler Usually they're using, well, not always, but usually they're using some kind of, you know, domestic hardwood. So in the U.S. that would be maple, oak, cherry, walnut, something like that. And those are kind of medium hard woods. Nowhere near as hard as ebony, of course. And, um, but way harder than spruce. Um... And just in case anybody 
thought that scraping soft materials or just cutting soft materials is easy, then I invite you to slice up a marshmallow into thin slices. See how easy that is. So the problems with a soft material is that it can tear and deform in ways that make it quite difficult to cut. So that's why uh, a hooked scraper, which is what we call this kind with a burr, is, um, is nice because, as we mentioned, it has a built-in chip breaker, which makes it uh, It makes it cut in a more predictable way. It can only take off so much, depending on how big a burr you've turned. And, of course, how hard you're pressing. So, you can see here that even though the, the direction of the wood isn't that happy, it's kind of, I'm working against it to some extent, it still is leaving a pretty good surface something we can recover from. And the goal here is to get it close enough so that our sanding chores are minimal. Try this guy out. This is a, a scraper that I made from a piece of spring steel, which you can order as shim sock, uh, any thickness you want. And uh, so this is one you can, you can buy a big roll of this for short money. You make all the scrapers you would ever want. Working quite well. And there is a thing where when the scraper gets just a little bit dull, not dull dull, but when it's not super, super sharp, it in some places behaves a little bit better. And I think I can make that claim about this particular scraper. It doesn't have a fresh edge, still cutting okay, um, and it's leaving a a pretty nice surface. You can see. Then, you know, when it comes time to um, work in here, you know, you might say, well, you need a little bit different shape, so you can get in here with a a little plane of some kind and take off some material. All right, and then to clean this up, back to one of our thin scrapers. That we can shape by bending it.
and bye bye tool marks. So that's the deal. A lot of fussing and a lot of judgment involved in getting the correct shape and getting it to uh, be symmetrical, if that's what you want, uh, from one side of the guitar to the other. But challenging, but really fun. <laughs> that's what I think. Really nice work day. That's how it goes.